being here. I really appreciate your desire to learn or to refresh what being a Baroness is. And I see some of the ladies that helped me with the interview. So thank you very much for being here. And I'm going to share the screen, my love. Can you all see it? Yes. Okay. So welcome to Baroness 101. Everything you wanted to know about being a Baroness and you were afraid to ask. So I think, and as the interviews will um, tell you, that the being a Baron, the, the Baronet, the office of the Baronet is one of the most committed jobs in the SCA. So you would think that there should be some training for it, right? But um, let's see, let's see what we find out with these interviews. Um, it is normally assumed that every BMB trains their successors, okay? And that each barony is different and therefore they cannot be a general training. And that the BMB are just eye candy leaders. So they don't really have to be trained. However, in this presentation, we're going to assume the following, that local training is not always available because of many reasons. Say the previous Baron and Baroness were not available to train you or the new person didn't feel that the, uh, they needed to be, the new people, they didn't feel that they needed to be trained. So there are many reasons why. Even though each barony has its own idiosyncrasies, traditions, rules. The essence of the service is always going to be the same. That's why I believe that there should be a standardized training for this posi position, at least in the service part. Of course, the idiosyncrasies and the traditions that you're gonna have to find it, find it out by yourselves. Um, and the baronet ends up having a lot more duties. I can be, especially in small baronies where you don't have a lot of people and you do a lot of the work. So in this class, we're going to cover what it is to be a baroness as per corpora, what it is to be a baroness as for the 15, well, the 14 ladies that I, I interviewed, plus me, and um, at the end, we'll have some questions and comments. Your questions and comments. So Corpora says in their article, in, in its article number five, Territorial Barons and Baronesses, and this is all it says. It, it talks about the responsibilities, four <laughs> responsibilities. Uh, it talks about the duties and it, it, it it says that it's a, a ceremonial, it's ceremonial in nature. And it, it reflects the presence of the, uh, of the king and king, the king and queen. Then it also talks about that you have to work with the baronial officers and that you are responsible for the awards, for presenting the awards in the name of the crown. And the fourth point is that you may hold, they, they give you the option that you may hold other society office while you're being a baron, baron or baroness. So, except for a senescial and baron exchequer. And actually one of the ladies that I interviewed was telling me that while she was a baroness, she was being senescial, kingdom senescial, or some, an, an office like that important. So brave people, right? In the interviews, I try to include four types, the sitting baronesses, the former baronesses, founding baronesses, and I interviewed two baronesses from another kingdom because I wanted to have another perspective. Um, I try to include at least one baroness from all the groups in the kingdom. If I were to do this, if I were to expand on this present, on this research, I would definitely include more people 
from other um, kingdoms. Because I do want to prove that the idiosyncrasies are different, but the service is the same. Here we have, for the city in Baronesses, we have Baroness Shoshana from Kerguelen, Baroness Imaya from Algron, Baroness Maria from Kerta, Baroness Audrey from, from Arkell. From the, for the founding members, um, um, Baronesses, I'm sorry, we have uh, Mistress Monica, Baroness Citadel, uh, Mary, Baroness Fontaine, and Jacida, Baroness Ker Kergalen, and um, Baroness Audrey is also a founding Baroness. For the former Baronesses, we have uh, Baroness Alamanda, Baroness Lane, Baroness Maeve, Baroness Elizabeth, Baroness Jeanette, myself, and Her Majesty Elizabeth, and Baroness Sabia, both from the Kingdom of Edinburgh. So these are the questions that I asked them. What does it take to be a Baroness? And this is the one that had a lot of responses. What I'm going to try to do is um, cover the ones that are, were more common. And honestly, I believe that this training should be like in stages, like there should be like a different classes trying to focus on different um, aspects. But that's, that's another topic. Um, the second question one was, what were your main challenges? How did you overcome those challenges? And what tips would you share with somebody that wants to be a Baroness? And what, uh, what did you gain after being a Baroness? And I also wanted to end up with like a, a, an extra question in case I didn't cover any, something that they wanted to say with the, um, anything else that they should include in the presentation. So for the most common answers for the, what does it take to be a Baroness? We have, I <laughs> guess what, patience. And uh, what I've seen is that this, is, this doesn't only apply to being a Baroness. I think that all these points are relevant for anybody that is service related, uh, service geared. So having patience is a big one. Uh, another one that was very common in all the answers was uh, love your people. Even the ones that you don't, that you don't like because you're gonna find out that you're not gonna like every single person in, in your group. But um, as one of the Baronesses said, you have to work around their awfulness. So you have to put yourself out there. You have to make yourself visible. You have to walk the extra mile to, to be out there. If you're too shy, then try to not be as shy. Um, don't be afraid to work hard. That's a big one too. And you're gonna be, they also mentioned being a cheerleader, being a mom, that's a major one too. Uh, you have to be graceful because you are going to reflect the, key, the queen. And they also talked about uh, dealing with people graciously. It's, I have to say this one because I, it, it was very funny and then Mr. Salamanda allowed me to say it, that um, even if we, if you are busy or you go into the privy or it's like two o'clock in the morning, you can say, oh, it's okay, I, I'm just on my way to the privy. <laughs> so you, you have to say it, but you can, you have to say it gracefully graciously. Uh, another big one too is you have to be willing to invest a lot of time. This is a 24 seven job. So you have to be prepared to be at people's beck and call. You, your time is gonna be limited. 
you have to put yourself, your game at the back burner because what you're doing is for somebody else. It's for the group. Um, even though you're only required, at, at least in, in our kingdom, to go to local events and coronations, you will be tradition, traditionally, you will be expected to go to more. Uh, you have to be willing to spend money. We'll talk about that. And you have to be service oriented. And as I said before, willing to work hard. I think I put that one twice. <laughs> Maybe because it's- Because you have to work extra hard. Um, Then they continue talking, talking about how, that you have to be nice, that you have to be kind, that you have to be approachable, that you have to be, and from here on, I'm just gonna start saying the ones that catch my eye, but that's why I think that this should be divided into different classes because all the information that they gave me is so important for somebody that wants to be a baroness and somebody that is, uh, oriented towards uh, service. You have to be sincere and genuine because people can tell if you're not. Um, I love this one. Bring out the best in everybody. And I think that that's the one that touches my heart the most. You have to be able to find ways to bring the best in everybody. And uh, I honestly see the SCA as a haven from all the things that we are living in the world. So we are the facilitators. Um, also, you have to be able to not make the populace unhappy, which is not the same as make them happy because you're gonna find out that you're not always gonna make them happy. Um, you have to find people you trust <clears throat> you will be, you are very lucky if you find people that you trust, uh, like we, we had Rita for instance, and she was in totally incredible. So finding people like that is a blessing, but also you need to be your, put yourself out there so that people feel comfortable to come and do it with you. Um, Understand that you represent something bigger than yourself. So we are the representative of the dream for a lot of people. You have to learn to improvise. One of the baronesses was telling me that um, traditionally their group was supposed to have, provide the, for the goodies for the list table. Well, she was not given that information so she shows up to the event and the first thing that they ask is, where are the goodies? What did you bring? Guess what? <laughs> she had to go get something because you have to be willing to improvise. It's not saying, oh, sorry, I didn't know. I, I was not told. Those are not um, things that people want to hear. And you have to develop mediation skills because um, you're going to be between the people, the people's problems a lot. People are going to bring you a lot of their problems, even mundane problems. Uh, you have to be a combination between mom and dad and rule and, and a ruler. And somebody was mentioning that being a teacher was helpful. And uh, when she said it, I was like, oh, yeah, you're right, I've been a teacher. So it did help because it helps you with the performance uh, part of it. Um, you have to have guts because you're going to be faced with a lot of things that are going to be difficult and you're going to have to learn to solve them right away. You have to look good, sound good. You have to look good because you are representing the crown. You're representing uh, Her Majesty. So you have to learn quickly. When I I was asked to be a baroness by my husband, I had only been playing for a year. So 
I was not even ready or didn't know what to do. So the first thing that I did was I went to Australia and I and I talked to every single baroness that I could find to to just learn everything I could about the position. And so you have to learn it real quick. Even if you've been playing for a long time, you have to learn real quick because this job is, yes, of course it helps if you have had SCA experience and it helps if you have had leadership, leadership positions in your life mundanely, but it's gonna to be totally different than anything that you have done. I like this one a lot. You have to, to be strong enough to have conversations at different levels. So you have to be able to talk to a newcomer just the same way that you're gonna be talking to the crown. The main challenges, not having a lot of people to help. Admitting that you can't make people happy all the time. That's a big one because at least most of the people that I interviewed wanted to make people happy and uh, so that's a, that's a very difficult one. Um, dealing with challenging personalities. Ha, there's always a problem child. And um, they they also said that every barony has one, of course. It's like with kids, one kid is gonna be less um, easy to deal with than others. Um, find a line between what to set aside and what not to. Like, okay, this is as much as I'm gonna let you say or do to me. And this is my privacy. This is my um, my privacy that I'm not gonna allow you to, to cross. For instance, um, we had, we had, our kids were very, very little when we were Baron and Baron as well, little, little to me, but they, they keep being little and they're not, but. Um, so there, it was a challenge to have the kids be wondering by themselves, especially for somebody that was very new in the SEA. So I wasn't really um, comfortable having them go around. And the kids just became like the baronial kids. And everybody felt entitled to scold them or tell them what to do. So I had to stop that and be kind about it and tell them, okay, whenever they are doing something that is not supposed to, because they were pretty new in the SEA as well. The only one that had been playing for almost 30 years was my husband, but my kids and I were pretty new. So whenever they are doing something they're not supposed to, I'll be happy to deal with them. Let me know and I will take care of it or my, or my husband will take care of it. So that way they were reprimanded if they were supposed to be reprimanded, but it was not like everybody, like a line of people scolding them and telling them what to do and where to go. So you, you have to set a line. But I don't want to interrupt your flow, but, but I don't want to interrupt your flow, but that's, that's amazing. <laughs> and not in a good way. Wow. <laughs> Another challenge was uh, money. Another um, a common one was money. But I will tell you in a minute what, how it, it can be overcome. Um, and I just noticed that I repeated having people to help. <laughs> well, because it's really a challenge. It is really a challenge. Like some of the baronesses were saying, where are the, all the people that offer that we're gonna help when we stepped up? Getting award recommendations, believe it or not, that is so difficult. Like, um, Her Majesty from Eight Mill was telling me that one of the differences between being a Baroness and a Queen is when you are a Baroness, you don't get a lot of um, recommendations. While you, when you're a Queen, you're just floated with recommendations. So that one is difficult. And letting, do, uh, letting people do things for you because most of the ones that are in this position are the, are the doer ones, are the ones that, oh, something is needed, oh, let me go do it. 
but you have to kind of stop yourself. I'm like, and think, no, somebody else needs to do it. If, if there's somebody else <laughs> to do it, somebody else needs to do it because that's gonna be good for that person too. And, the, and how do we solve it? Uh, for instance, the money, I like this one a lot. There are ways to make it more reasonable. You can spend, spend a lot of money. Like when we were gonna step up, somebody told us, you're gonna need thousands of dollars. And I'm like, ah. But at the end, yes, we ended up needing a lot of money because you end up providing for a lot of the things that the barony cannot provide for. Because this, this is a, non, a, a nonprofit organization. All the money that is spent has to be for the good of all the members. It cannot be for just a, a, a small group. So if you do not have donations, you're gonna end up doing it. And then if, if you get so involved in being the mom and dad that if you have a member that doesn't have money to pay the bills, for the, the, the electricity this month, then sometimes you, you try to help and there are others that um, don't have like basic needs and it, it's great if you can get donations, but sometimes it's difficult to, to get donations. So there are ways to do it um, not as expensive, like uh, getting crash base and you meet awesome people getting crash base, by the way. Um, catching rights, uh, giving handmade uh, largesse. So there are ways to find uh, a, to not spend as much money. Um, then with the challenging personalities, I like this one too, uh, is figuring out the specific issues that those problem children have. Like if somebody needs a lot of reinforcement, then give them a lot of reinforcement so that he, does, uh, he or she is not as challenging. Um, Having problems with officers, then um, the Baroness told me enlisting the help of well-respected members. If they're not gonna respect you, then find members of the Barony that they respect and have them talk to these people. Live up to uh, people's expectations. When you are a Baroness, People have expectations that you should be this or that and all the lists that I told you about at the beginning. But if you're not given <laughs> proper training, how are you supposed to know what you're expected to do? So, Some of the challenges, believe it or not, was uh, being an introvert. Like, for instance, this Baroness was telling me that she doesn't like to have her picture taken. <laughs> well, being a Baroness, she's in the spotlight, so she's going to have a lot of people uh, taking pictures of her. And the way she does it is just embrace it and accept that she's going to have a lot of pictures taken. Um... This one is important too. There's always stuff five minutes before you didn't know about. There's always surprises and you have to kind of be prepared for those surprises. How do you prepare for a surprise? <laughs> Consider all the scenarios. Or if you can't solve it, just provide a smile. People respond well to smiles. Knowing who to ask for, and uh, this one, um, um, <laughs> Baroness Slane was the one that told me this one, and I thought, I thought that it was hilarious. Knowing who to ask for what. Like, you're not going to ask for help to run the pastries. Uh, the diabetic gluten-free member. <laughs> uh, because that makes it a little bit more difficult. Oh, you're not going to ask an archer to deal with things that have to do with uh, fighter practice. So know your people and, and 
know what to ask from them. Um, the clicks, something very important. Having clicks can damage the groups because if the people are in the group, they want to be, they want to be included. So having clicks is totally the opposite. So how do you fight? How do you fight a click? Be inclusive as a baron and baroness. Try to be inclusive. Try not to only do things for a certain group. Um, more the mom and dad again, like all the kids get the same. I grew up in a very populated family. We were uh, seven kids. And if there was a piece of chocolate, my parents would cut it in nine pieces, seven of us and them. And then if we got this much, everybody got it and everybody felt important. Not, n is not always the case, but uh, today I'm giving something to Grania and then tomorrow I'm giving something to Lady Rylina and like take turns with people. Give, I mean, love, affection or things. Having, having managerial experience and having um, being able to managing and coping with people's personalities, we all already talked about that. Not having experience retinue. That could be a good thing or a bad thing because you can train the people to your needs but at the same time you need people to train, so. This one is important too, fighting my own demons. Um, so if the person has gone through a difficult situation and a member of the barony is facing a difficult situation, that same difficult situation, it's, it's, very, it's, it's very challenging because it goes beyond what you can do. So all the, the all, all what you can do is just be the best I could for that person. For tips, and this one has a lot of tips, so I'm just going to touch on some because we are almost through 27 minutes in. Um, help others. Look nice. Rely on your officers. This one is a difficult one because you, if you come from a small barony, it's difficult to find and to be able to rely on everybody because you may not have a lot of people to rely on. Be active. You need to be active so that people know that you mean business and that you care for them. Have good manners. Be prepared. This one I find that he, uh, very interesting because you don't think that you're gonna need it, but you do. Um, have things in your tent in a way that people can have them, that can find them in a hurry. Many times you just ask somebody, please go get this because I forgot it. Because you probably just been super busy all morning and couldn't even get to the tent to before court. So you have to find, put it in a way that people can actually find it easily. Make sure that you're financially and emotionally in a place to take the job because it can be hard and taxing. Uh, have rela strong relationships with uh, a strong relationship with the Baron, whether he is he is your partner in life or not. This one is important. Um, um, it's a commitment, a time commitment. I have not seen anything regarding training in the barony, uh, in the kingdom. 
Um, I, I may be mistaken. However, in Aiden Bell, I, I have seen that Her Majesty teaches a class on being a Baron or Baroness. And Baroness Sevilla also prepared a wonderful, wonderful document that if you ever want to ask her to share with you, I'm pretty sure that she will, because it's it's beautiful. You finish reading it and you're like, oh, yes, this is what I want to do. And so one of the, the things that Her Majesty told me uh, is that uh, she was in a class and this person had uh, the time commitment in a very graphic, presented the time commitment in a very graphic way. And she had a deck of cards with 52 cards, each card representing a weekend. I'm pretty sure that some of you have heard this. And so she would ask volunteers pretending to be the Baron and Baroness. So she would tell them, okay, take a card for each kingdom um, um, event that you're gonna have to attend to investitures, coronations. So if there is seven baronies, then do the math. Um, how many coronations you're gonna attend in three or two or five years, depending on the of the barony of, of the kingdom. Um, so then subtract all the bar baronial events. At the end, the weekends that you have left are like five or six cards. And that's where you're going to have your family on vacations, like the laundry that you have, you have not been able to do for God knows what, how long. So having this type of, of preparation, of training is important so that people know what they're going to get into. Um, another tip was uh, be on the same page as the Baron and the Baron. Uh, you both are the same. So be on the same page. <laughs> Emphasize that this is a service position. Ask yourself why you want to be a baroness. Examine it real well, because if it's just going to be for the shiny, once you step down, really give you much. Because you just become, oh, what is it that they call it? White trash? Well, I'm not. Landless. Landless, land, landless, white, trash. <laughs> landless white trash? Well, I'm not. In I, my use, case. I use landless step trash, and I think you would appreciate that one. It's it's more appropriate for our personas. <laughs> yeah. Cinnamon, la, cinnamon instead. Uh, keep notes and um, write on your calendar things that you think that you need to, to learn. Or then you need to remember. I my memory is horrible, horrible. So what I used. Are very suiting. Um, one of the baronesses adapted uh, Kennedy's. Don't ask what you can do for your barony. Ask. Don't ask what what your barony can do for you. Ask what you can do for your barony. And also something from a more recent scenario is with great power comes great responsibilities. Overall, I think that we all agree that even though this is the hardest job that you can have in the SCA, it is the most rewarding one. And hence, it is worth taking the risk. Um, that's my email. If you have any questions, we can open the, the, section, the section of questions.
I have a question? I can stop sharing my screen, right? I had a question. Yes. How can you help um, when you were the baron or baroness for a long time and then uh, no one coming up? How can the old baron and baroness in uh, help the new ones coming up uh, to get at ease into the role? Hi, Rita. Hi. This is the Rita I was telling you about. The one that we were lucky to have. Uh, I think that, well, I, my brain thinks in PowerPoints and uh, Excel sheets and manuals. So preparing something <laughs> like a manual for the next Baron and Baroness, or at least a guide for people to know what, what to expect and Hopeful, hoping that the, the, the new Baron and Baroness are willing to take it because sometimes the new people say like, mm, I don't want to do it your way or I don't want to follow under your shadow or, or I really don't agree with your ideas. But uh, so you can offer the, the help and you can offer the experience, but it is totally up to the new people, the new um, B&Bs to, to take it or not. And hopefully you would have like a continuation, but if not possible, at least be gracious to accept that sometimes it, it, it doesn't happen. Do you mind if I pipe in? Of course. So um, I, I think that Her Excellency um, tapped on something very important, which is it's much more challenging with your um, successors than it is with, um, you know, the following after that. I think um, one of the things that, that you need to do as a as a baron or a baroness is simply encourage the populace to trust in their vision and trust in the fact that um, change isn't a bad thing. And every new baron and baroness are going to do things differently because they're different people. And we're all here to do a job, but that doesn't mean that we are people who have a very unique perspective. So really it's about just encouraging people when they come to you with those questions of well, why are they doing it this way? You know, just simply saying, because it's who they are. And it doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing. Their ideas may bear fruit that um, you weren't expecting. So just enjoy the ride and see what happens. Thank you, Your Grace, Your Majesty. Okay. <laughs> Excellency. <laughs> I mean, I'll take that. I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> I give you all the titles. <laughs> all right, we we have a couple questions in the chat. So the first one from the chat: Is there anything you regret or wish you had done differently? Oh yeah, oh yeah. We were sitting for four years, so one one time or two times or I don't remember how many times maybe I I lost my cool and I was like uh, I can't do this uh, like there was a major problem and I just I was tired and I just lost it and I mean my losing is not like people are used to seeing me smile and uh, but I was so <laughs> the people were like, what, what the, so I wish I would have been able to put my anger aside and say, you know what, right now I cannot deal with this. I'm going to have to cool off and deal with this later. That's what I should have done, but I didn't. So yes, I regret it. And then be the bet be a better you and just go and apologize and say sorry i lost my cool no excuse but uh well it happens because in real life it happens too especially if you're juggling with kids and work and running the barony so 
sometimes you're going to lose your cool and but you have to be a better person and say sorry okay, we have another one from the chat uh when it comes to a baronial couple there is officially no sovereign consort relationship like there is with crowns and principality consorts however when there is a mixed gender pair in the role does that kind of relationship typically emerge anyways and more broadly how do gender roles affect how one approaches the office mm, does anybody want to jump in <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't mind speaking to that and i can speak as well after um oh see the, <laughs> after you <laughs> So, um, so, and, and I have a different perspective as well because um, my baron was, we were not a, a couple mundanely. Um, we each had our own spouses, which added another different layer onto trying to manage things That's because um, we, uh, you know, we, we get together fairly regularly, but like we couldn't just say, hey, this thing happened and like while we're watching TV and what do you think about this? And um, so it, it took a little bit more co coordination. Um, I think that these dynamics do come about and I think it really depends upon the couple. And this is going to be true for whether or not you are um, a couple in the mundane world or, or not, um, where you just kind of like, like, for example, I was much better at public speaking mundanely. Um, I get up and I'm a, I'm a university or well, college professor. So I get up on the regular and talk in front of large crowds and so at first that was my job was to do the court and you know i'd ask my baron do you have anything to say he's like yeah and he said like, five words um he, he, <laughs> definitely, he did definitely um improve after that um but there were other things that he was better at handling and so we didn't have that relationship where one person was going to dominate the the whole the entire uh tenure <laughs> It does happen sometimes, but it's really, I, I, you know, it, it's just more of a, of a um, personal. Um, the other thing too is, is um, with gender roles, I guess is, is, was the second part of the question. Um, I think so. I, I didn't really see a lot of people that are like, oh, you're only the Baroness, you know, we're not going to talk to you. I'm sure it, it did happen that there were going to be people that preferred to speak to the Baron because he's the Baron. Um, but I, I it was it was brought up in one of the answers that um, they, they were not a couple. And so people would defer to the Baron. And so she had to kind of train. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, and again, you know, I, hey, I I'm here too. Yeah, I, I personally didn't didn't experience that. Um, but I'm also one of those people I'll, I'll be in your face about stuff like I just kind of don't accept that. Um, <laughs> so even if you don't want to talk to me, guess what? Here you are. Um, <laughs> so um, it, it, it's not necessarily always a good thing, but yeah, I mean, it does happen, but I don't necessarily think it's always the expectation. Um, I mean, there were, like I said, definitely a few people, but as a society, I don't think that it's an ex that's the expectation. Um, something that... Um... Master Angus and myself did during our tenure is because we both had backgrounds in theater. Neither of us had an issue with standing up in front of large crowds and addressing them. The only question was who would go first? Sometimes we would step over each other. And for that, we we reverted back to the the European court system where the king goes first, the baron goes first, and then baroness goes second. It, it's it i didn't see it and i still don't see it as sexist it's just that's what history is and that's the history that we were following it did uh when we were of course at separate events to divide and conquer there was of course no problem with me holding the court and being the first and only to speak but when we were together we made that conscious decision that in order to not step over each other, this is the order that we would go in. So if that helps address that part of the question, I hope that helped. I have a slightly different perspective. 
Um, my barony uh, was the barony of Tariska there in Aitenvelt. I'm the uh, the token Aitenvelt um, former baroness who who's joined. Um, I am actually in the Outlands now, very happily. Um, miss my barony terribly, but. Um, Tariskathir is um, a very special place, as her uh, her Grace <laughs> Cecilia can attest. Um, and um, that barony was very, very gender rolled, um, and it it has a long standing history of being very gender rolled. Um, one of the things that I ran into um, was very much the mom and dad um, expectations. Um, and the, the number of times that, um, people brought problems to me that they would never speak to my husband about ever, or if they, they came to me, it would be, you know, a long drawn out, very emotional conversation. And when they went to my husband, if they ever had the cojones to go to my husband, um, it would be you know, brief, very short sentences, just to the point. Um, and there was also an expectation in that barony that the baron was responsible for the fighting response, for all of the fighting responsibilities and, and managing those groups. And that the baroness was responsible for taking care of the service oriented people and the arts. That was, that was just the expectation. Um, you know, we worked very hard to kind of overcome those gendered bias roles but it is something that we see consistently. I always think it's interesting. And, and um, for those that don't know, um, I'm Alamanda. I'm a former Baroness of Fontaine d'Ansab in the Outlands. Um, I should have introduced myself before, so sorry. <clears throat> um, as is Elizabeth, who's, a, who's my uh, grandmother, as we say. Um, but I, I always find it interesting to, to see how different traditions arise and, and different uh, relationships between uh, in different baronies, even within the same kingdom, but especially out of kingdom. And it's just one of those things that's fascinating to me just to see how, how even though there are definitely some commonalities as a society, that, that there are definitely distinct differences as well. So baronial personalities. Yeah. It's a fascinating mythology. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we, we will adopt that in the Outlands, yes. <laughs> if I can uh, comment, um, I'm not a Baroness, obviously, but uh, <laughs> um, Elliot and I, uh, I think one of the things that we did that kind of minimized the, that whole uh, coming, you know, the, the, the sexism thing, or, you know, the coming to the Baron versus the Baroness, is uh, as we do in our relationship, we always made sure that people see, you know, our communication, that everything that that we do, we decisions we make together, and uh, so we kind of made sure that people saw that and people knew that um, coming to me versus her wasn't going to make a, you know, a bit of difference, uh, and so kind of nurturing that idea in the barony, I think, really helped to maybe curve some of that what might have been there. Uh, or what could have come out that it just never really, really did. At least not that I saw. I know Ellie may have a, a different uh, perspective that saw things that maybe I didn't, but. No, I agree, especially in my case, it was not, I didn't, it was not a challenge, the sex part, but it, okay, this is PG, right? Uh, the gender type, um, but, uh, the challenge was that he had been playing for longer, a lot longer, and I hadn't. So people would want to go to him. So once they learned who I was and that I was approachable, they also came to me. Because at the beginning, they were like, oh, she, this is a new one. This one doesn't know anything. She wouldn't understand. But, um, and uh, Tariq was always very good about letting people know that I was included. He was never the, uh, 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 um. it was always a couple thing, which helped in the sense that we were trying to build up a family idea and we wanted to make people feel that they were in a family. So they had the mom and the dad. You're 
Your Excellency, I'd like to uh, go back to the uh, um, regret question. Um, so uh, my husband and I, um, when we were polling, we let people know that we were um, actively seeking to start a family. Um, unbeknownst to us, that was going to be a very, very, very challenging journey. Um, it took us a surgery each, six years and an IVF to obtain our son. Um, and we were going through um, fertility treatments while we were on the baronial seats. One of the things that Her Excellency mentioned in her presentation is finding that balance between your, your privacy and, and your, your sense of self, right? Um, the one thing that I regret is um, not being more open um, quickly because eventually we did let our barony know exactly what was going on, but we weren't as open as we should have been um, with that huge life struggle that directly impacted our events consistently. I mean, we would have a doctor's appointment where we would get bad news and a couple of days later we would have a baronial event and, you know, I'm a zombie, you know, because I'm trying to process these major life experiences. You're very much in a fishbowl. Um, and um, one of the things that I've heard in regards to um, regrets on a slightly different tack is um, His Grace Duke Falhalric in talking about being a crown, um, but he also stated that it does apply very much to barons and baronesses, stated that while you're sitting on your seat, and please forgive the, uh, the, um, the cussing in a moment, um, you're building your own shit sandwich. Um, and what, what I mean by that and what he means by that is at the end of your tenure, when you're done and you're no longer in that position of authority, all of the things that you've done are going to come back to haunt you and you're going to eat your own shit sandwich. So really you wanna consider how much do I wanna eat and what flavor of shit sandwich do I wanna eat at the end of this? So just you know, consider the things that you really wanna take a stand about and determine if that flavor is one that you wanna deal with afterwards because the way people treat you while you're while you're seated versus after you're seated is a wildly different experience. Does anybody have any other questions or comments? I do believe that there's a need for training. We train for so many different things and the baronet is a very demanding um, position. It, we should have at least uh, the minimum training of what is expected of us. As And as I showed, it's not about the idiosyncrasies. A, a training should be more, more overall, on more geared towards service. Like, okay, what do you, what do you need to know to be able to take this position? So I, I would even think that like several classes and have different baronesses teach like a topic, something like that. I think that that will be very um, important for, for the barons and baronesses, the sitting baronesses and the, the ones that want to do it. And somebody's writing something. Tanya, you want to read it? Yes, we had a comment come up uh, saying that this person would say training is one of our biggest issues in the SCA. Very few positions they have taken over during their years have had any sort of real training. And we have another person mm -hmm. who agrees with these things. Mm -hmm. um, so it is 12.17. So I'm going to stop the recording. Uh, if people want to keep talking and hang out, uh, you're welcome to do so. I can leave the room open for a little, little while if you would like.